Hey everybody, this is Rhett. Welcome to Statistics. In this video, I want to go over some of the basic vocabulary of statistics. So let's get started. Statistics is the art and science of data. It includes collecting data, organizing data, analyzing data, and interpreting data. The field of statistics is divided into two branches, descriptive statistics and inferential statistics. Descriptive statistics refers to methods for summarizing and organizing the information in a data set, while inferential statistics consist of methods for estimating and drawing conclusions about a large group based on the information in a smaller, hopefully representative group. For a more detailed explanation of these terms, please watch my video, An Introduction to Statistics. Okay, so let's focus on descriptive statistics, in particular, some of the vocabulary of data sets. An element is a specific entity about which information is collected. In statistics, element is synonymous with individual or subject. An element doesn't have to be a person. You might be collecting information about cows, flowers, cars, or some process like manufacturing. A variable is a characteristic of an element, which can assume different values for different elements. What are some of the characteristics of interest to the researcher? Maybe things like height, weight, stem length, color, speed, number of donuts. These are examples of variables. An observation is the set of values of the variables for a given element. Since an observation is a set, we'll use set notation and list the variable values separated by commas inside brackets. If you were interested in gender, height, weight, hair color, and eye color, then an observation might look like this. Male, 6'6", 205, blonde, blue. A spreadsheet is a computer application for organization and analysis of data. Microsoft Excel is probably the most widely used, and that's what I'll be using in this series of videos. In the video, An Introduction to Statistics, I told a story about giving a final exam. If you don't know the story, that's okay. The short version is, I gave some students a Krispy Kreme donut before they took their final, and the remaining poor souls went without. For this tutorial, I've expanded the data set. Let's take a look and see if we can identify the elements and variables and examples of observations. Take a moment to study the spreadsheet. Who or what are the elements? Recall that an element is an entity about which information is collected. The elements are the students who participated in the study. What are the variables? In other words, what are the characteristics of the students that were of interest to me, the researcher? Well, I wanted to keep track of whether or not the student received a donut. I also wanted to know how many questions were answered correctly on the final exam. That allowed me to calculate the number of final exam points earned by each student. I also collected data on height and weight. The age and gender of each student was also recorded. The participants were asked to classify their fitness level. And finally, there were two sections participating in the experiment. And each student's section number was noted. So these are the variables the characteristics of the elements that are of interest to the researcher. Now, let's look at some examples of observations. Recall that an observation is a set of values of the variables for a given element. The observation for John is the set 1, 28, 140, 184, 74, 22, 1, high, and 203. Here's an observation for McKenzie, and another for Amber. Variables are classified as qualitative or quantitative. A qualitative variable is a variable that categorizes the elements. 
and is sometimes referred to as a categorical variable. A quantitative variable is a variable that takes numeric values and upon which arithmetical operations may be meaningfully performed. All quantitative variables will have numeric values, but just because a variable has numeric values does not guarantee that it's quantitative. To be sure, you can use my go-to arithmetical operation, an average. If you average the values for a certain variable, do you get a meaningful result? If so, then the variable is quantitative. Otherwise, it must be qualitative. If you're scratching your head on that one, don't worry. I've got some examples that I hope clarify the difference. Here I have six variables to classify. College major, test scores, number of interruptions, eye color, trunk diameter, and gender. Which of these are qualitative and which are quantitative? I think that it is helpful to imagine some of the variable values. Just make up some data. Say you ask four college students their major. What would a list of responses look like? Maybe something like this. Math, business, psychology, and sociology. These aren't numeric values, so this cannot be a quantitative variable. These values categorize the students. College major is a qualitative variable. What about test scores? Well, let's make up some values for this variable. Suppose we are interested in SAT scores. Then a list of values might look something like this. These values are numeric so this could be a quantitative variable. If you average the numbers, you get 582. Does it make sense to say that the average test score was 582? Sure, so test score is definitely quantitative. Let's say I keep a log of how many times a cell phone goes off during class each day of a semester. Can you make up some entries? How about zero? two, five, and one. If you average these numbers, you get two. Does it make sense to say that the average number of interruptions per day is two? Yes, so the number of interruptions is quantitative. What about eye color? Eye colors include brown, hazel, and blue. These values categorize the elements, and therefore eye color is qualitative. So number of interruptions and eye color need to switch places. If you measure the diameter of a tree trunk, what are the values going to look like? Maybe something like this. Is the average meaningful? Yes. The values are numbers and the average is meaningful, so trunk diameter must be quantitative. And finally, if you ask subjects to identify according to gender, the values of the variable would be male and female. These values categorize the elements, and so gender is qualitative. So college major, eye color, and gender are qualitative, while test score, number of interruptions, and trunk diameter are quantitative. Quantitative variables can further be classified as discrete or continuous. A discrete variable can take either a finite or countable number of values. Each value can be graphed as a separate point on a number line, with space between each point. A continuous variable can take infinitely many values, forming an interval on the number line, with no space between the points. If you can count to get the value of a quantitative variable, then it is discrete. If you must measure to get the value of a quantitative variable, then it is continuous. Let's look at some examples of both. The number of class interruptions on a given day could be counted. So that is a discrete quantitative variable. 
Other examples of discrete quantitative variables include the year you were born. Other examples include the year where you were born. Consider the values 1980 and 1981. Picture these numbers on a real number line. Is there any space between them? Sure, there are lots of numbers between 1980 and 1981. For example, 1980.2 and 1980 and three quarters. So the year that you were born is discrete. And so are the number of classes you're taking, the number of friends on your Facebook page, your age and years, and how many cups of coffee you have in a week. A continuous variable can take infinitely many values. And if you have to measure to get the values of a quantitative variable, then it is continuous. So trunk diameter is continuous. Other examples include the price of tea in China, your student load amount, how long it takes you to run a mile, and the time that you've been alive. Classifying variables can be tricky. Some variables can be classified in multiple ways. For example, age. If I ask, how old are you? You might answer me with a number such as 21 or 22. These are numeric values, an average has meaning, and these are whole numbers on a number line. So age must be a discrete quantitative variable, right? Well, what if on the other hand you're asked to select your age group, 18 to 24, 25 to 34, 35 to 44, and so forth? or maybe to select child, adult, or senior. In either case, now your selection places you in a category. So age must be qualitative, right? One last variation. What if I ask, how long have you been alive? The answer might be a value like 9,480,800 minutes and 47.25 seconds. That is, if you're barely 20 years old. Now the values are numeric, and since time is measured, age must be a continuous quantitative variable. You really have to consider the values of the variable to classify the variable as qualitative or quantitative, and as discrete or continuous. Let's take another look at the spreadsheet from the donut slash final exam study. Which of the variables are qualitative? The values in the Krispy Kreme column are numbers, so it is tempting to say that this is quantitative. But if you average the values, is it meaningful? Does it make sense to say the average of whether a student received a donut or not is 1.4? No, that doesn't make any sense. Recall that this is a yes or no question, and that a 1 indicates yes. That means that the Krispy Kreme variable is qualitative. What about correct answers? Well, the values are numeric and an average is meaningful. And you can count to get the number of correct answers. So, correct answers is a discrete quantitative variable. So is final exam points. On the other hand, height and weight are measured. And these are examples of continuous quantitative variables. Here, age is recorded in years and is a discrete quantitative variable. We've already discussed that gender is qualitative. The values in the fitness exercise column are not numeric. They are categories, low, moderate, and high. This must be a qualitative variable. And finally, section number is also qualitative. Even though the values are numbers, 203 and 205, it would not make sense to report that the average section was 204.2. So that should get us started with descriptive statistics. We have the basic vocabulary of data sets. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Until next time, stay real and be rational.